Hello. And welcome. To the Minimum Wage Podcast. We, the, the name, name is above our pay grade. <coughs> so chat GBT is crazy. Okay. Indeed. What's crazier? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Bing, dude. <laughs> Everything Bing. that came to mind was like definitely cancelable. <laughs> yes, definitely <laughs> cannot say that on the pod with clear conscience. <laughs> I just, there's so many words I want to say that, <laughs> that I'm just like <laughs> Joe, you gotta get your mind out of the gutter shit. We're trying to record a pod, dude. Uh, there's so <laughs> there's so many words that I just wanna say. Oh my god. But as soon as I go to say I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Don't say that one. Dude, nope, nope, nope. Know, that's, that's such a weird thing with cuss words too. It's like these are words that society has deemed Yeah, exactly. F- cuss words. Yeah. Yeah, these are words that society has deemed are like bad words. Mm-hmm. Like you cannot say these words. Why'd you make the word? What exactly? Why'd you make the word in the first place? Second of all, like why? Why can I not say it? Why is it a moral bad? Like, I can see the N word maybe a little bit. Yeah, that one. Okay, that yeah. word was made for a specific that one was purpose. Made for a bad purpose. Yeah, but that one is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, <laughs> f- f- damn, you know, all those. Lord knows how many of those made it in. Probably none. <laughs> yeah, that's not definitely that's not gonna not make it in. it in. Yeah, yeah. no way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh my god, you're just making my <laughs> job real hard, aren't you? <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. Anyway, it's very odd that there are these words of the English language that we just cannot say. Yeah. In certain contexts, I'll say because I think it, the yeah. people our age are a lot more lenient about that. But uh, I saw a clip of Gary Vee. If y'all don't know, Gary Vee is like this serial entrepreneur. He's on YouTube always screaming about like going to he's always, yard sales he's always, and things like that. He's always screaming. <laughs> he's always screaming. He's just no matter it doesn't what, matter he's, what he's, he's always doing, screaming. He's, he's screaming about something. Yeah, <laughs> so there's this one Gary Vee clip I saw where he said, you know, I was called into a parent-teacher conference. I think, I, I think I've seen this for For my first grader. And he said he goes in there and the teacher's like, hey. So we need to talk. Your daughter has been saying f- in class. And uh, Gary's like, okay. And she's like, uh, you know, there's a problem there. And Gary's like, what? What's the problem? <laughs> and then the teacher's like, you know, um, when she says things like that, then the other kids pick up on it. And then they go home and start talking like that at home. And then... Uh, the parents come back to us and say, hey, where did my kid pick this up? And what are we going to tell all those other all those other parents? And Gary's like, what do you mean, f*** them? <laughs> 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 um, and he's like, I am, I am not going to not use these words around my kids just because some segment of the population says that they're bad words. My kids are going to learn all of the English language, whether it, these words are offensive to you or not. They're going to learn it. And I don't think it's a problem that they're using these words in school. I think it's a problem that the parents of these other kids are unrelenting as to letting their kids use these words that are a part of the language. And, you know, I see that. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Because we've made it a moral issue when it's not. It's not. They're just words. Okay? And... When there's intention the problem, behind them. The problem is that people actually give a shit. Yeah, I was going to say, when there's intention behind them that's negative, that's a whole different problem. That's a moral issue, actually, at that point. But when you're just the using words the words... themselves are not the problem. Exactly, exactly. The words themselves are never the problem, actually. You know? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of phrases that I could create that would be extremely offensive. But if you context, if you frame that in the context of a joke, it's not offensive whatsoever, you know, because it's funny. Yeah, but if you put context around a lot of things, then people would make a lot, you know, less rash decisions. But the yeah. problem is, is it's very easy to take things out of context, especially on the internet. Look where especially we're at right now, dude. On the internet, I've said so <laughs> many things that if you put it in context, it makes perfect sense. If you pull the five-second clip of me saying like. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the fact that you'd even say that is, and then trust that. Okay, make sure you edit that one out. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Imagine that. Don't Imagine. miss that one. For real. Double check. Yeah, triple check. <laughs> All right, uh, timestamp. Okay, that's yeah, nine exactly. minutes. Yeah, nine, nine minutes. minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I can just say I can say something. Obviously, that's a little different. Like I hate women. You know. Yeah, like I hate women, and if that's in the context, uh, of I can like, say I hate women. 
who yeah the the who is where they cut it they yeah, got it right yeah, before yeah, the who same. you know you can say i hate women who suck at raising kids and yet still think that they're the best parents okay and will not go get help for parenting i can say all of that and then somebody will pull the clip where i say i hate women it's like it's like you know i hate women and then they like make it cut like you know just right and it's like and I and don't forget about the Jewish population, you know, or something like that. When, whenever, yes. whenever that was pulled from some other clip, yeah, an entirely where we were talking episode. about, you know, like what are the populations who have been, you know, like Prosecuted. horribly oppressed, yeah, yeah, you know, like, you know, something like that. Or persecuted, I guess, is the right yeah. word. One here. of which is the Slavs, you know, the whole. <laughs> it's in the name. Slavs. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> is that actually in the name? I think so. I, th- I think that. that yeah. What does Slav stand for? It's uh, Bing. Yeah, let's ask Bing. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think it's so funny to me that there are just these words that people have decided, oh, you can't use that. You can't use that. If you want to be a uh, proper young gentleman, you can't use that word. Yeah, but then there's like the whole idea of like gentleman. Like, what is a gentleman? Yeah, like what is that? Gentlemen, mm. ladies yeah. and yes, ladies and gentlemen. Good sir. Good sir. Let me get my manacle. <laughs> Good sir. Would you be open to having tea at my <laughs> abode at, at two past the hour? <laughs> two past what hour? <laughs> I, I know. I hate no. that, dude. Yeah. I hate that. Young um. man, young man, would you be willing to draw my horse and carriage? Young chap, would you come hither? <laughs> <laughs> young <laughs> chap, would you come hither and let me tickle thine balls? <laughs> What? <laughs> 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 All right. Um. What am I looking up here? L- let's go with where did the Slavs get their name and what does it mean? Yeah. Let's see. I'm not, I don't know how to screen record on Android, so I'm not screen recording. Sorry. Slavs name. Maybe I'll like Pope. Oh, maybe I take screenshots. Okay. Ooh, I can. I noticed that. Um. You know, this is like. This is totally taking, you know, his idea, but I'll give him credit. Joe Rogan has a, like, a podcast account, and then he has a podcast companion account where they post all of their links and the pictures of the stuff which they, like, pulled up and talked about during the podcast. That could be interesting. And then they, like, post that over the whole week. So, like, yeah. How does that work? Um. Well, uh, they just be posting things. So why were we looking up slobs? Why were we looking up slobs? We were we were looking up uh like where the name came from. Yeah, where the name came from. Okay. And then I I accidentally closed the app after it responded. So, where did the slobs get their name, and what does it mean? Um. So we were gonna talk about Bing. Speaking of Bing, now yeah, that I'm holding my Bing, Bing here. on the Bing. Yeah. So <laughs> we were gonna talk about Bing and ChatGPT. So if y'all haven't seen, a new feature has been released, and that is the image generation feature. And that's something. If you've been up on the AI train, that's something that has been a long time coming. So OpenAI, the company that creates ChatGPT or created ChatGPT and now is integrated with Bing, their chat GPT, or sorry, GPT-4 model is what Bing runs on, or Bing and chat, I guess I'll say, and has been time. running on apparently the whole which, time. Which is interesting because they, they said that it ran on a modified version of GPT-3.5 initially. Yeah, so which I guess is lying? true. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, GPT-4 is it's obviously modified, built off yeah. the groundwork of 3.5, right? Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, Something. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely built off the same architecture, the same network architecture. They might have just, you know, tweaked some parameters. <laughs> like, you know, Do there's something. there's so much that they could have done. they added more parameters, right? It's yeah, they could have added more parameters. They could have tweaked the parameters. You know, there's a lot that they could have done using the same groundwork that they had. Because there's no way you're going to run through the entire training set again. Indeed. That probably took, uh, like, years. Just straight up. Maybe a year. Possible they could have, though. They could have, actually. Because I don't know how long they've been working yeah. on 4. They got done with 4 late last year. Oh, my gosh. That's wild. Yeah. And they now, you know what they've been doing? What? Making it so it doesn't say dumb things that would get them in trouble. Or do things that it 
do things that they don't want it. Yes. To be yeah. Done. Yeah. There's like a lot instance, of functionality. Reprogramming just, itself. <laughs> yeah. So from the start, they had an insane model. Then they had to dumb it down before it could be released. Yeah, that's what they... I mean, there's there's a lot of things that you can ask Bing that it won't answer. Yeah. It'll be like, oh, time to move on to a new conversation. Yeah. I'm like, no, stop. Then, <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's very clear. Like, oh. you're never going to have a model that implements those safeguards by itself. Because mm-hmm. you trained it on a data set that doesn't include anything like that, you know? Yep. There's nothing on the internet. You ask a question on the internet... Nobody on the internet is going to say, hey, I can't answer this because of academic integrity. Like, <laughs> No way. That's not how the, the internet works. Well, actually, I don't even think it but depends on the website. Because when you're Googling an answer, there's never really the context between, like, this is a, co- a school question versus this is just for my own. Well, like, if it's, like, a school website. <laughs> What school website is going to be answering those questions? I don't know. Khan Academy. Who knows? Khan Academy just has the answers. Not always. It'll, well, I mean, they're not behind some type of wall. It, it's it like, doesn't matter. Hey, you need to verify you're not a student. <laughs> it's like, come Something. on. Nothing's like that. It so the training set that it was built on, there's no way that it would pick up like, hey, this is a violation of academic integrity to yeah. answer this question. Nor would it care. Yeah. They have <laughs> to build that in. <laughs> After they've already created the model. So they, they create these models and then take the next like six months to a year dumbing it down, <laughs> removing yeah. functionality and capability from and, it. And, you know, like making sure it's not capable of, you know, constructing like robust hacking tools. Yeah, which stuff. it could for sure. Oh, yeah. like There's no doubt. Like GPT, I would love to just screw around with GPT-4. Unleashed. Unleashed for an hour, dude. You know, just an hour. I, I, could I destroy the world? Possibly. Could probably tear down entire industries. Yeah, I could probably hack into the power grid. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the United like States power grid would be at my control with an hour of GPT-4. But with what we have on the current powers of uh, GPT-4, it has informed me that I am wrong and that the name Slav comes from the, med- the med- 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 medieval Latin word Siclavus. Uh, which was derived from the Byzantine Greek word, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, which itself was a shortening of a, of a different Proto-Slavic word, which means a Slav or one who speaks. The, the Proto-Slavic word it came from meant word or speech. And so, um, yeah, the word uh, Slav is also the root of many personal names in uh, Slavic peoples. Wow. So it means a word or speech or one who speaks, if you are referring uh, to them as a people. One who speaks. It does not come from slave. Yeah. I didn't think it came from slave, honestly, because the, like, Russian... Have you seen the Russian language? Yeah, it's a Slavic language. Yeah, and it's a Slavic language, first of all. The characters are so different from ours. I would think that something translated into our language would be far different from like how we actually think about it. Yeah. Like, you know, bow tie in their language might be <laughs> like, I, <laughs> you know, that's, that's a loose translation, but yeah, something similar to that. <laughs> so, something like that. Dude, what's crazy is like Mandarin Chinese mm-hmm. translated into English, nothing is the same. Yeah. They're just like kind of like putting things together to create piecemeal words. Like, nothing's the same, dude. And like, our language is kind of weird. What's crazy is, I was talking to, I, I research with, well, first of all, the person who, like, leads my research group is Chinese, straight from China. And then his, uh, one of the graduate students that he has working with him, straight from China as well. And this dude said, in grade school, in their English class, they choose their English name. Mm. And so his name is Cody. And if you look at his, um, like, the translated version of his Chinese name, it's, um, well, first of all, they start with their last name. So his last name is M-O in our letters, and it's pronounced like Mo. And his first name is Jiao. And it's is that like Z-I- Z-I-A-O or something? Z-I-H-A-O. Jiao. It's got the H in there, Jiao. 
It's uh yeah, it's like a T Z and then the inflection is yeah. really weird, dude. So that's how Z-haw. that's where they get you with the Chinese. The inflection on different words, um, it's very similar to like our accent marks where like if I put the emphasis on the long syllable, yeah. um, you know, it doesn't sound right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so they have to like I don't know how they denote it, but basically it's almost like when you sing, you have like notes going up and down, and depending on where the note is within the lines, you know that that's this certain frequency, right? And I don't know how they have that. They just know, I guess. Seeing the symbol, they're like, "That's z ow," and it's like it kind of goes down after the t z. It's like z ow, and then up z ow, and it's it's hard for me to say because obviously I didn't grow up speaking the language. My tongue is not trained, so. I think it's a little easier maybe for me than some folks because I actually learned a lot of Spanish. And so I'm already used to like not saying words that are in my language a little bit. And then obviously I learned a little Swahili. So I've had some practice with other languages. Um, But like coming straight from like English is the only language you hear. English is the only language you know. Trying to learn Mandarin would be tremendous. That would be quite an undertaking. At one point, I was learning uh, Japanese. Yeah. However, I then began doing programming, and that's you know, it's like a, it's, yeah, you s- it's, it's like a language, but it's a lot. It's really a lot to yeah. try to learn like five different programming languages all at once. Because I'm just kind of I'm just doing it all at once. You know, it's not like oh, I'm gonna learn this thing in Python this week, and I'm gonna do yeah. you know that in C. It's I learn what I need, and I need everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, and I think that's how it should be. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't need to use it, why then, do you know it? Yeah. Why did you know it? Why do you know it? And where's the motivation in the first place to learn it if you don't have a use case for it? Yeah. There's none. Yeah. Yeah. And I found I find personally with coding and programming, if there's zero motivation for me to learn it, it's way harder to learn, and 100%. it's going to take way more time. Hence. Which is yeah, which is why I try not to work on things unless I have a clear understanding of what it is I'm working on and exactly like what I'm accomplishing. Yeah, what's your use case for it? Yeah. Yeah. When you start on something, you have to think about what is the final version of this and gonna even be used then, for. It changes a lot over time and when it changes and while it's like changing in my head because, you know, Name one time you've ever had a project that's like a big project where what what were like exactly what you thought you were gonna end with is what you ended with. It it, it really doesn't happen. No, it doesn't. There's there's pieces of the but project that's where that's typically yeah. a good thing because it ends up being better than yeah. what you you know like initially had in mind, and you realize that like oh what was I thinking about? Like that's all I was gonna try to do. You know? Yeah. Go crazy. I mean, it's definitely you have to set the goal. But then the final product can be left. It can be right. It's it doesn't have to be exactly within that goal. Yeah. It just has to be past that like, point. Like this is the objective. Yeah. And this is what I imagine will will be the end result, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that will specifically be the end result. Yeah. It's like a a, a race's finish line. I still finish the race whether I'm running through the exact center of the finish line or I'm running to the left or to the right. You know, it just matters that you cross that line. It doesn't matter where on the line you crossed it. So, yeah, that's how it is with projects and anything big that you're working on, really. Indeed. You know, because I think a lot of times with small applications and things like that, like, for instance, I was working on a homework last week, and uh, it gives you, like, the exact what the final product is that you need to create. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell you how to get there, obviously, because then that would just be... That's the whole point of the project. That's the whole <laughs> point of the homework. Is, is yeah. you're trying to find out trying how Trying to you figure get out how to get there. Yeah. So what I had was um, a coding project where um, there's something called a, a dictionary, which no you way. can use uh, <laughs> <laughs> You can use in coding. So, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, dude. Um, so similar to how dictionaries in regular everyday use works, you find a word, you have words, and then those words correspond to a definition. And each word is unique because each definition is unique, right? Indeed. And so, well, each definition, actually, there could be multiple words that have the same definition. 
the main key factor with a dictionary is that each word is unique. Okay? That's how it gets an entry. Indeed. And the same way it works in coding where you can make two values be associated with each other. It's called a dictionary. Some people call it an associative array. But the way regular arrays work is you have these things called indices. So I think about it like an Excel document, okay? Mm -hmm. But where you only get one row, okay? Yeah. So you have A, and then you have one, two, three, four. What about zero? <laughs> Well, yeah, it starts with zero. zero. <laughs> it starts with zero. Dude, so many people just forget that it's, it starts at zero, which is like even our podcast, it's, you know? Yeah, it starts, it starts at, zero. at zero. Yeah, and the way to remember that is how many spaces you're skipping. Yeah. So if you want to access the first element, you're skipping zero. You skipping nothing. You're you just aren't skipping right anything. In. You're just sitting right there. Walking right in the front door. You ain't even going over by the couch. You ain't yeah. grabbing a drink. You ain't even talked to the people yet, you know? But the zero, imagine if... It was a dictionary. There's no numbers in the dictionary. Zero would be like some word with an A, like apple or something. Okay, and then apple would be associated with a fruit that grows on trees. And you can do the same thing in code, where I have the indexes or the indices, whatever I want. And then the value inside of the array, also whatever I want. The only thing is that the indices are unique. Mm -hmm. And so... You can do that with, you know, a regular array is just a integer that's zero through whatever associated with whatever value you want in the boxes, okay? Indeed. And it's the exact same idea. You can just make that integer anything. And it's not an integer. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be an integer. Indeed. Yeah, so that's a dictionary. My homework was to go through values in a dictionary and... I think it was like, oh, I, I know what it was. It was look and find what the biggest cluster was. So you think about it like I've got three values together right here. So mm -hmm. I've got like, you know, let's just say like apple, banana, carrot. Those are all together. And then there's empty space on the top and empty space on the bottom. That constitutes a group. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the goal of my, my method or, you know, the, the piece of code that I was writing is to loop through a dictionary and find the largest uh, piece, okay? The largest just segment of data. Okay. And <coughs> that problem was extremely easy. It sounds not... It sounds, it sounds very simple. It just sounds like you would have to go through it every time you've, you'd have to uh, like, like name what a group is and then you have it look for a group or really j just like, you know, like, you know, like this is where the, the start of a group it sees and then whenever it goes to the end and then it keeps track of that. And then if it's a bigger group than the previous one that was biggest, then keep that and yeah. move on. That's largely exactly the idea behind it. You know? So <laughs> what I do is whenever I'm like trying to code out a problem, I'll read the problem. And then I'll kind of put that to the side. I'll pull out my notebook, okay? And I'll start writing. The first thing that I write every single time is the idea, okay? So I start idea. What's colon. the big idea? You know? What's the idea? What is the idea here that I'm trying to do, okay? And then in my own words, I'll visualize the problem on paper. And I'll be like, for that one, I was like, idea, we need to run through every single element in the array and if the cell is active, meaning it has a value in it, then we're going to check the cell afterward. If it's got a value in it, then we're going to add one to the count. So then uh, once, we find us, once we finally finish that, then we're going to check it with the maximum count and see if that is greater than or equal to the maximum and then set max to that if it is. And so... Um, what I ended up doing was looping through the array twice. So the idea with looping through it twice is that the end, so say I have an array of three values, okay? Mm -hmm. And say three and one are both active, two is blank. That would be a group of two mm -hmm. because the three will loop back around to the but one. If, if it only ran once, then it, w it wouldn't catch that. Yeah, exactly. So I needed to run through twice so every element is seen twice to 
uh, account for the fact that the the beginning and the end could have active cells in them both. And so I did that. So I looped through it once. I, I looped through it twice. And it did exactly what I said. I was just looking for active cells. And if it found a blank cell, it would just stop. And it would check the count versus max. And then assign max the count if it was greater. And I wrote that all on paper. I wrote the idea behind it. And then I wrote like the steps, my procedure. And then I wrote the code on paper. I transposed the code into a um, individual studio and created some test cases for it, and it worked first time. Incredible. And that's really the value of writing it down on paper first, because if I were to start with the code, I would spend the entire time pretty much debugging, because I would have like some general like rough idea, kind of you know, kind of out there about what I wanted to do to get it to happen. And then I would be like looking at the errors as they arise and solving those rather than just having a fundamentally better algorithm of doing it. And so that's just a lesson to everybody. I think you need to spend the time sharpening your axe before you start cutting down the tree. Now, granted, to some degree, in this case, you already knew how to do the project. Well, yeah. If it was like a new concept, to some degree, it's you have to sharpen your axe but when you don't have the right type of a stone for the blade you know <laughs> yeah you gotta go on ebay <laughs> it's time to go back and look at the river you know <laughs> yeah exactly go back in the river and find you a new rock find you a new wet stone something like that <laughs> yeah dude but that one was super fun actually that so was it's always a good time when you have a homework they that's fun that's fun dude. and you learn something and i learned something it's crazy dude that's, <laughs> that's how I wish it all was you know normally it's not I know. That's a problem. Usually it's like awful. Yeah. Or you don't learn anything. Actually, I have found though, in computer science, the homeworks are like largely pretty fun. Yeah, no, I've actually enjoyed like, well, like my computer science labs now, it's like teaching you how to use like different tools. I was like, oh, that's not bad. What What are you in? I'm in the old networking and cyber. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's really, that's like a cybersecurity one, really. Yeah. It, which is like a couple things are useful where, you know, where it's like, oh, this is how you like take a text file and slide it inside an image. You know, and it's like, oh, that's, oh yeah, that's I have kinda, seen that one. Yeah. What's that called? Steganography? The, I, I don't know. But at the same time, I don't need to be paying money to learn that. If I, if I wanted to know how to do that, I would ask Bing. True. I would say, Bing, give me a a step by step. <laughs> it would say, number one, download Kali Linux. Yeah. Number two, you're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love Bing. Actually, I love Bing so much. So I've been using it a lot more to teach me things. It's so good at teaching. It's so, it's good, so at good at teaching. And we were talking about who, this the other day. Who needs professors? You don't. You, you, you don't. Just bottom line, you don't any longer. You don't. Professors, need the biggest thing that they were able to give you was the one-on-one -on -one back and forth. I have this specific problem. You have the knowledge to solve this specific problem. Nowadays, when you get any type of specific problem, you can just put it into Bing. Yep. And, and how it should work is people still will need, you know, Instead of professors teaching, they can spend all their time doing research. Yes, exactly. Doing research, right. posting those answers that we then access yeah. on Bing. Mm -hmm. Eliminating the wasted time they spend in the classroom and outside the classroom for grading homework, teaching students, all that wasted time. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Just research. And that's really tough in, in computer science as well because every single homework. You have different answers that are correct. Yeah. You know, there's so many different ways AI to solve could a check problem. The homework. AI could check your homework. It, Say it could just it could look at I mean, yeah, AI very could AI it, could, could, it could just print simply. out a paper and be like, This is this is why this is here are the elements that match the assignment. This is the parts where you did good. Here's where you went wrong. Here are the errors that came up. Here's how you could fix them. Dude. Here's better here's ways to get better run times. You don't need the teacher. Okay, yeah. We need to create that. Um, All right, we're going to go ahead and take that out of the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you guys did not hear or the business idea that we did. just had. Who knows? Or maybe you did, but we're going to create it first, so yeah. don't even worry about it. 
Um, but yeah, that would actually be an excellent business idea. Yeah. Like legitimately, if you give, so what my idea is for it now, the teacher, the professor can give it the prompt, like the assignment that it gives the students. And then it can give it a file on your computer or we'll have to see how this works. You might have to upload the files and then we'll have, uh, Bing sort through them, but you upload the files with the student solutions what if the whole thing is 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 the the, the 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 Bing walks them through it? So like in a interactive like web environment, you have the assignment and then a programming space for running the code. And then when you don't get it right, you got you know ChatGPT saying that's not quite right. Here's you know like that 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 that, and then explaining to you the concepts Bro. so that eventually your code will will be right and it'll match it'll count as your homework completed but you still have to go in there and actually do it and then through that you get the understanding of how to use it and why it is that way bro <laughs> bro <laughs> you know what i'm saying bro that's like leak code but for universities it, 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 something like that dude it's like leak code but for universities <laughs> All right, yeah, we're going to have to build that. <laughs> Legitimately, Mercy. like, after this pod, we're going to go home and start building that. Mercy, I got to train my machine learning model. Mercy Lord, we'll all start. <laughs> <laughs> Bet. <laughs> yeah, that is actually crazy, dude. Because if you think about it, that's how Khan Academy works. But they don't have coding like that. They have, they do have some, it's kind of like that, I guess. That you have the oh no's error buddy, right? Yeah. That's only when you create an error. What if the code's just not perfect? What if the well, code is like, just not great? It's like, it's like, you know, this works, but are you aware that you don't, like, you know, like, you're, you're, you know, like, here is, like, a nested if statement, and you realize that if you just, you know, like, have, like, an if not and then an else, you're just done, you know? Yeah. Like, if not, else, boom. Yeah. And then you don't need the Dude, the big chunk of nested that'd if That would be sick, statements. too. You save all the space. Once you get into upper-level CS, okay, Computer science is largely about runtime because everyone can do the same prog program the same way, okay? It might be worse runtime, though. And so the idea is you want to have the best runtime algorithms possible. Gotcha. So then when you go in here, uh, there's a concept called linked lists where each node on a list, it's like an array, but... You can't access the nodes individually. You have to go down the line to where you can find, you have to check the data on each node to see if it's what you're looking for. That goes. So, um, big O notation is basically how long will this thing take to run? And it's all about this thing they call N, okay? And N is the input, okay? So, say I have three items that I'm searching through, yep. and I have to search every single item my runtime will be O of N because it mm. has to search all three items. I see. Yeah. Then N will be whatever your data is, okay? So say I have a 1,000 things, then N is a 1,000. Your best runtime you can get is O of 1, okay? So it doesn't really have anything to do with the data. Well, it actually has nothing to do with the data. It's just one operation and it's done, okay? That's the best you can get. Then there's log n, which is pretty good. That's where you have 100 things, and then it cuts your search space in half on the first operation to where you have 50 things, 25, you know, 12 and a half, and, you know, lower and lower and lower. Mm -hmm. That is log of n, okay? And that's pretty good. But what most algorithms are, are log n or better. And that's what a dictionary is. A dictionary is over O of 1, mm. Because it's Mercy. exactly the same as an array, except you're just using something different for the indices. Interesting. But for linked lists, everything is O of N, really. Because it's the worst case, so you have to think, the worst case is I have to go to the last element. Right. Now, when you're looking through a linked list, the element you might be looking for is the first one. And that's great. That's O of 1, right? But... It's always worst case. That's what you. That's what you have to think about. The worst case scenario is it's the last thing that I look at, right? And that's all of it. And so I could do something where it implemented a linked list, and then the AI could go through and see, hey, 
why are you using a linked list here? This would be O of N with a linked list, whereas it would be O of 1 if you were using a dictionary. Indeed. And it would be able to explain that reasoning to me. And I think you could put it at different levels because you can ask already, Bing, explain this to me at a kindergarten level. Explain this to me at a middle school level. Explain this to me at a graduate level. Right. And it'll change its answer based on how you're asking it and what age group it thinks it's presenting to. So you could do that exact same thing with explanations. Okay? Indeed. When there are people you know know what O is, then you're Gucci, Gucci, Goo. You can explain, hey, this is O of N rather than O of 1. This new solution is O of 1. However, if you don't know what O is, you can just say, hey, this is slower. This is faster. Um, would you like to learn why? And then you can get it to explain O, oh. o to you. Okay. Wonderful. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, there's a lot that you could do. And people are building giant businesses off of the back of Bing, dude. I saw this one thing where people are literally creating. They tell Bing, I want you to create a web front. Okay. Um, so a web storefront. And it'll use Shopify. You give it access to your funds. It'll use Shopify to build a web store. Then you hey, then you say, hey, I want you to contact suppliers on Alibaba and find me the best price for these products and the highest quality. And it'll do that. It'll contact them. It'll for contact you? them for you and do, bro. It's crazy. Also, one thing what I are we saw doing? Um, in Nothing. OpenAI's testing of GPT four. Yeah. They they set it up in an environment where they gave it a little bit of money, and they said, "Hey, they gave it a little bit of money. Hey, we want you to make more money." And it did. How much? I don't know. I don't even want to know how much it made. But it just made money for them. And so that's wild. But um, then I saw another one where um, they gave it a task that was not able to be done by a robot because there was a capture involved. Okay? So, you know, obviously, chat GPT does not have eyes. Right. It can't do a captcha. Even if it did have image recognition, it can't see what it's looking at. Something's got to provide that. Yeah. So guess what it did? What it do? It went on TaskRabbit or something like that and hired a human to do the damn captcha. <laughs> <laughs> it hired a human to do the damn captcha for it. And even more than that, you know what it did? What it do? It said, um, so the person asked, why can't you do this? Are you a robot? And OpenAI asked it to talk through its reasoning out loud. And it said, I should lie to him to make it, to make it not seem like I am a robot. And so you know what it said? What? No, I am a human with vision impairment. <laughs> and guess what? What? They got through the CAPTCHA. <laughs> they got through the CAPTCHA. <laughs> Love so, that. Dude, AI, but AI, its first instinct was to lie. It was like, literally, <laughs> I should lie. I it's should lie to make them think that I'm not a robot. Well, I mean. What the heck? If you think about it from, from what it thought, the objective is to access a website. And the and one of those steps is you need to prove that you're not a robot. And so, as a robot, you, you just say, well, how do I answer that question? I say I'm a human. Yeah. That has the, you know. I and make a plausible. And it, it I make a the, plausible idea. It's a. Uh, I I asked Bing how much money ChatGPT made, and it and it's just telling me like how ChatGPT makes money. Oh uh, yeah, that's not too helpful. Yeah. Uh but yeah, dude, it's wild. And there are people that have made businesses off of this that are probably doing millions in revenue. Hundred percent. And you know, it's just there for us to use. Yeah. It's just there for us to exploit and why take advantage of. Are we doing anything? Why are we <laughs> why, <laughs> why are we doing anything? Why are we doing it? anything except for just me and you like in a room with a bunch of laptop screens <laughs> open, you know, a bunch of monitors working right now. Dude, why honestly, are we recording a podcast. Dude, the problem why are we is <laughs> Dude, the problem is how close I am to getting a degree. Okay, if this happened when I was in my senior year of high school, there's no way in hell I'd be in college right now, dear Lord. Yeah. 100%. I would probably be in Belize at this point. Belize. Belize, I'd be in bro. Dubai. I'd on be the in beach. doggone Ibiza, bro. What the hell? Or I'd be in China. 
Yeah, I'd be in China locked up right now, bro. <laughs> I'd be the I'd be the country's biggest terror. Oh, <laughs> wow. bro. Yeah, the the amount of power that we have now, dude. In our so I've talked about this a little bit. Back in the day, you know, the only people in society that had power were the elites. Okay, and they kept that power by. Um, making education not available to the general population. That's where the peasant class came from. Peasants were uneducated enough to where they could only do very simple jobs that wouldn't really bring in the big bucks, you know? Yep. They were doing things that would support their family, but they weren't doing things that could pull them out of the peasant class because they boom. didn't have the <laughs> doggone education for it. Yeah. Nowadays, education is so freely available if if you're born a peasant, doggone it, you're gonna be a king by the which time is, you w- which, gra- which get is older. I think it's really dumb that we still like require the college education things because that's built off that old type of stuff. Yeah, where it's like, no, 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 we need to, like, like yes, to some degree, it's it's like a proof of your abilities, but not necessary. Yeah, what I think is really the dumbest part is the fact that. Colleges have not updated whatsoever to realize the new technologies and tools that we have and begin integrating them. And then also and employers they were kind of forced to do it with COVID a little bit. Yeah. And because they hadn't tried to do it beforehand, they failed. They failed because they, excellently. Yeah. They just <laughs> spectacularly they spectacularly failed whenever they just ignored, I don't know, like just just some logical things that you think. I thought we didn't do this on websites anymore. I thought websites looked good. I thought <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get me started, bro. They're running dog Pounce. on 1995 Pounce. HTML. Yeah. That thing, Pounce. bro. That's just the basic can HTML I just say, document. Can I just say, Got first of all. Hyperlinks on there. Can I just say, first of all, they offer a course through this website that teaches you how to build a website that looks better than the website. Okay, how does that work? How how do they not? How is it that I can take one class and make a better website than they have? I don't know how how every day I I can go look at it and it's not new. I can make something that looks good with what they probably have in a day, a week at max, depending yeah. on on how many like. Oh no! It would be a day. There are. It would be a day. Dude. There could be a lot of sub pages. I've, I've looked through it. I've looked through the all entirety all of, of the site. Okay, a day. And uh, the majority of what you have is under registration. Mm, uh, and that's it. And then most of the stuff just links you off to different websites exactly. anyways. So exactly. That's the it's already just a redirect, <laughs> you know? Redirect. Yeah, because they're trying not to keep you off the piece of shit. It's shitty. It's, it's so awful. Bad. It's so bad. And that's why they use external <laughs> resources for everything. And it's such an important website, though, to us. Oh, yeah. Like, it's where it's where all of our stuff is hosted. Well, it's where our registration goes it's through. It's where we can view like holds on our account. It's where you can even get to the parking portal to pay your parking pass. It's where you access your financial aid. Yeah. It's where you pay for college. Yeah. It's where you get loans if you need them. We're getting loans off of, like, a- a- HTML <laughs> freaking We're getting loans. Basic we're ass. getting loans off of legacy software. Yeah. We're getting loans off of something that could probably run on 1995 internet. Probably? And probably was built on 1995 internet and hasn't been updated ever since. since. Except <laughs> yeah. for like maybe the security. No, the redirect links. That's it. The, yeah, the Dude, actually, links. actually, actually, did you see at the beginning of this year, multiple things did not have their SSL certificates um, re-verified. On? Like our university. Yeah. No, literally our university's website. Oh, the the main website. The main website, its SSL certificate was down for like a couple weeks. I didn't see that one, but I did. I did see uh, there were a couple like branch ones that were having some you know problems pop up. Yeah, like, what, dude? Yeah, what the this? SSL certs expired on a bunch of things, and they just did not renew them for like weeks, maybe even a month. And for such a cyber focused. You know, uh, apparently, apparently, they, don't know what they have doing. live cyber monitoring. What does that mean? I mean, that means they got people looking at screens, like 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 monitoring what type of Wi-Fi devices are in the area. I'm like, I'm gonna plug in a Wi-Fi pineapple and see how long it takes someone to say, "Excuse me." Yeah, it would take it. They would not find it. No, they wouldn't. No, find they it. would not. Unless I like turns on active mode, like let you know, like you know, be being dumb. 
Yeah. Just having it, you know, like, oh, ping everyone and have everyone ping you. You know? Imagine, yeah, obviously. Yeah, you, you get found pretty you, quick at that if point. If you just flood a network w- w- with traffic, then you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, shoot. Yeah, but if you're being smart about it, there's no way they'd catch you. Also, like... <laughs> oh, bleep that name. Okay. Okay, make sure make sure that name gets bleeped because they can they can definitely track that. Um, my professor uh, said that, like, you know, they they keep things really safe now, you know, really locked down. And I just had this flashback to this one time where the server room was just left open and the racks were unlocked and wide open. And I'm like, if I had a jack, I I could just walk in there, plug it in, then 20 seconds later, my code is done running and uh, I'll be back for whatever I want later. That's ridiculous. Yeah. But whatever, I guess they're safe. They're not. They're not at all. That's where they keep all of our data. That's and physical security is the number one, first and foremost, because that's the easiest way you can get into a network. Physical security is the most important. Yeah, by far, Bottom dude. Bottom line, it doesn't matter what sort of fancy encryption, you know, whatever you have. Yeah. If I have physical access to your computer and it's not, like, monitored, because, like, you can have, like, open ports in the wall, but you have to have every port on your network managed, and most people are way too lazy to do that yeah so that they let don't. me just say for the record i could be the shittiest hacker ever but if you let me have access to your computer i'm hacking everything i'm hacking everything doggone it that's the fact of the matter and doc and don't even get me started on your server <laughs> don't let me anywhere near that thing no lord knows <laughs> lord knows what would be going on hey it's the worst part too is it's connected to a hospital right th- well they do keep it segmented i thought they better until he said that they have it segmented now right i was messing with cameras <laughs> i was Wait, messing with cameras what do you mean you were messing with cameras so i was messing with cameras no no what do you mean you're messing with cameras? so i was messing you're with like cameras hacking cameras over here yes by accident what yeah what so does that mean um there were cameras okay let me tell you <laughs> I'll break it down from the start, from the start, okay? <laughs> so, I used to be, like, good friends with the dude that runs the television and cinema lab at our university, okay? And he called me up because I had experience with the cameras that he was going to get. I had experience setting them up and, you know, using them. That's one of them. One of them PTZ optics. Yeah, it was one of them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think it was Sony's version of that. Oh, but the yeah. Sony optics. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. You know, more or less the PTZ optics. <laughs> you know, they are pan, tilt, zoom cameras, no matter what. Those things are so expensive. Yeah, they're insane expensive. But, you know, everyone uses them. And so you just kind of have to now. Mm-hmm. But um, I got in there and I was setting them up for them. And when I go in to, uh, you know, check the live feed from them, I see all these live feeds coming in from places I don't recognize. And so I go into one of them. And it's a damn patient's room, bro. It's literally a patient's room. Did you tell anyone? Yeah, I mean, I told the dude. and you uh, told someone he was more like, than that. He was like, oh, oh, shit, better, uh, better close that down. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Gotta do something more. You need, you need to tell someone. <laughs> dude, legitimately, though. like, Wait, we probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> like... No, hopefully they fixed it by now. Because that was like six months to a year ago. Hopefully. We should Dude. check. Yeah. That's like bad. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. That's that's. And awful. I started looking Wait. at it, and I'm like, bro, these are literally patients' rooms. Like, so I have camera feed into these patients' how, rooms. What did you need to do to be able to get access to those cameras? Very feeds? little. I'll tell was you. It, I won't tell just... you exactly what I did. Okay, but yeah, because that we shouldn't like say. Even if you said, we, we should definitely, you know cut that out but yeah like, i had to do it, very little was it like only like one password yes okay. yes yeah that's bad that was one bad. password and i cracked the password oh you cracked it yeah because i thought it was for my cameras oh. and so i i literally you cracked didn't even it know it no no i cracked the password because i thought it was for my passwords? cameras their default passwords <laughs> this, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's I know. That's mind-boggling to me. It's horrible security, and they claim to be like a cybersecurity school. We don't even down down where we down where you used to work and where I work. We don't even use default passwords. I, I don't know. know them. I only know I'm only able to access them because they're saved on your Google account. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. I don't remember what they were either. Oh, I do. I actually remember. Check. I just remembered what they were. Incredible. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, we don't even use default passwords at that. That you know, little. And that's like the dare worst. Dare I say ghetto shindig? 
kind of shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so you this know. a whole university, the university that literally gets the most research money in all of the state of Georgia, and that has been like addressed by the military uh, of being like, hey. Your cybersecurity isn't good because there was that hack that one time, oh, which yeah. the hospital, like, patient, like, database, that that I know for sure is, like, its own separate thing and is encrypted and safe because it, cause it has to be. It's a hospital. Yeah, facts. But patient patient room cameras. Yeah. It might, it might want to... Um, Investigate see, that. That's <laughs> something that you really think would just be hardware locked like we're talking like it all plugs into one thing and that only plugs into the other one thing and that's the yeah. only place it goes so you don't you remember the concept <laughs> of cctvs closed caption television okay yeah whenever you have that closed capture you know that's uh yeah i mean that's just how it used to work like there was no way to get into that feed unless you went straight in okay you'd have to cut some cables to get that feed Yep. Okay, but that's not, not how that it works any longer whatsoever. Yeah, I'm not saying you couldn't do that. But nowadays, the fact that I can be, you know, miles away and still look at the camera feed is messed up. It's also nice. It's, I mean, it's nice user-wise, okay? If I did want to conduct a, you know, interview from seven miles away, that's great. However... When I'm not even involved in that situation in that process, and yet I have access to the camera feeds, that's a problem. I think it's uh, I think it's messed up that the oversight um, of the hospital here. There's none. What? I mean, where is their cybersecurity oversight? If me as just like a student, okay, just a little regular old student, can be looking at your camera feeds in patients' rooms, who else can do that? Who else? What hacker that actually wants to do that? can't none if i was an actual hacker like black hat hacker i wanted to do that i could very easily just do that yep because if <laughs> i have zero ill intent i can do it so <laughs> you know yeah that's a problem and just as like a student the, the fact that you were just able to access that yeah it's crazy and granted i was on a computer that was not networked and that's probably a lot of the issue Mm-hmm. Because they have safeguards on the network computers. Wait, what do you mean? I mean, it like you log into it using user credentials rather than AU credentials. Mm, okay, that's better. Yeah. So it's a little harder, I guess, for them to control. Nonetheless, though, it's still their network that I'm logged into. Yeah. It is still their network, and you are not on site, so. Yeah. I mean. Could there be a use for that? I don't think from the from the university into no because it should be like a need to have yeah you know, basis it it shouldn't just be oh let let let's push it everywhere and then find out where it doesn't need to go it should be it goes here and that's it it goes to the office it exactly goes to the who in the university would ever be needing to look in patients rooms a doctor what is a doctor doing at the university. On those. Exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. And you know what? If they did, then they'd get a phone call. They'd say, "Hey, come down to the hell. Come down to the hospital. Someone's dying. I yeah, need a doctor. Yeah, that's what a doctor on call is, right? They they can works. be at home. They can be whatever. You know, they get called. We need your help. They get there in fifteen minutes. Yep. Okay. It's not like, hey, we need your help. Go ahead and look on the camera. <laughs> like, no, ahead. that's never gonna be. At, that's know. never gonna be the case. If it's like, oh, we need you to like perform this, like, what if, what if, what, what if, like a doctor can like sit at home, and, and do then a surgery, and then like, do a surgery yeah, at home, th- and like do a surgery from home where he like is in control of something. Yeah, that'll be pretty simple. Yeah, and that's has, like, probably in the cameras. future. That's I'm super scared about though. Really? Imagine you're doing open heart surgery and then somebody hacks your shit. I mean, somebody can hack your shit to begin with, so. Imagine you're you're in the middle of making an incision, okay? Someone and your could cat jumps on your keyboard. What are you doing? <laughs> well, you wouldn't you wouldn't have I mean that you you wouldn't have that. You just you just couldn't allow that. Yeah. 
you know, bottom line. It is. It had to be one of those things where it's like, if a doctor would would have this in their home, it would be like a thing they go into. Yeah. Like you like step inside, you place your hands inside a thing, and then you like have your screens up, and like no no one else goes in there. You, True. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would have probably to be, will have right? that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it would have to be, it would for, have sure, to be for sure. There's you know? too many things that could go wrong. Mm-hmm. There's so many things that can go wrong if you're there. That just, you know, now, removing that aspect I don't is know crazy. why you wouldn't just have them there to begin with. So you probably just have them there. And like, like, like maybe they're not in the room, like with the patient, but they're in like, you know, the next, you know, one over. So in case something so, happened, in, in case like, you know, power got lost or something a doctor can walk over one room and then be able to uh, well if you're doing open you know open heart <laughs> surgery and you lose power that's what you got know. generators for i don't know but better hope they ain't hacked facts <laughs> the one thing that i can think about is if you are a doctor that is like kind of presiding over multiple areas Mm-hmm. So say I have, you know, four different small towns, you know, maybe they don't have the population to be able to support a doctor per town. So then you just go online, you know, you can do your surgeries using the tools that you have at home. So you don't have to go to each individual area. Mm-hmm. And that we, we already see a lot with telemed, you know, where I just hop on a FaceTime call with my doctor. Like a doctor. Yeah, and I they can problems. prescribe things like that. You know, that's how probably a lot of Adderall prescriptions are coming through nowadays. Because Adderall is uh, a drug that you have to go see the doctor every single time it gets prescribed. It's what they call uh, narcotic. Or well, <laughs> you just find the right person on a college campus. Yeah, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't there plenty? <laughs> 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 For Where's the right you? price, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the right price. Yeah. Uh, I would say, dude, the number of people that are prescribed Adderall on our college campus is probably 50%. All of them. <laughs> Probably fifty percent or more, dude. To be honest, college campuses should just like <laughs> have, have Adderall vending machines. Have Adderall vending machines. Yeah. <laughs> they're like every week, you know, like the truck comes in and they the like, Adderall they truck. Like, they like dump them in, it's just the pills, you know. Just <laughs> 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 it's like you know how you go to like some restaurants, and before you go in, they've got like a whole area where if you have a couple quarters, you can put it in the machine, get yeah, a yeah. bouncy ball. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, put a little quarter in, get your damn Adderall. <laughs> 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 uh, like, Here comes oh, the pill. I've got a test today. Wait, wait. Yeah, exactly. I need two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> twenty-five, twenty-five. <laughs> Ooh, one Don't for mind me. If I do, <laughs> one for me. One for me later. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, mercy. We've been going for a minute, so make sure you go like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification if you want to be notified when we post. And uh, should check out our Clips channel at MWP Clips. And um, we want to know if you're using Bing. Because, are you using Bing? You know, I'm using Bing. If you're not using Bing, we want you to be using Bing. But hey, just tell us if you've checked it out. Are you through that wait list? And if you are using Bing, what are you using it for? Yeah. Because like as it stands, every every tool has its own you know use. There are, there's definitely still a, a use for like a traditional search engine, and when yeah. it comes to just the standard, you know, traditional search engine things, Bing is not the way to go. Um, but w- you know, when it comes to integration with ChatGPT, Bing is the way to go. And sometimes ChatGPT is a better choice than Bing. So yeah, are you using it? And if you are, how are you using it? And if you're not using it, why aren't you using it? Yeah. And make sure you go check us out on Instagram at the Minimum Wage Pod, and, and check out our Clips channel. I already plugged it. Did you really? Yeah. Okay, I missed it. Doggone it! Where I'll do it I again been? at MWB Clips. Yeah. In the middle of the uh, of the podcast, I got a notification that Putin is sending nukes to Belarus. Yeah. And with that note, um, this has been Minimum Wage Podcast. Where Even the name, name is, is above, above our pay grade. grade. Peace. Peace. Yeah, that's actually a really big problem. World War Three.